Maurice Ravel is the greatest, arguably the greatest orchestrator that French music has ever had. Um, that's always how I felt, so we wanted to showcase on that recording uh, this quality of orchestration and this is of course a common ground to say it's all about colors and it's all about the way the orchestra is um, every um, sound of every instrument is in incorporated or integrated into uh, a palette which is really different dramatically different that Russian music or German music. However, the other uh, aspects uh, of that recording is also uh, the, the, the contrast between intimacy and grand. Uh, and to this extent, I think the contrast between the Valse Noble et Sentimentale and La Valse, so with the same subject, which is uh, a sort of tribute to that great Austrian uh, music, uh, La Valse being one of his greatest and more, most powerful symphonic poems, and yet the Valse Noble et Sentimentale being much more in the intimate way, and I think that's precisely what Ravel did. Ma Mère Loi, Suite, being so intimate, and yet Daphne et Chloé being also at the end one of the most uh, um, uplifting and uh, triumphant of his music. Uh, so yes, uh, there's a lot of contrast. I think it's a good showcase of uh, what uh, the, the greatest masterpieces of Ravel can showcase in their orchestration. As a French Canadian myself, of course, there's always a tendency uh, to uh, want to typecast me as a French music conductor. And it's not something I'm against because uh, I love that music. Obviously, one of, as a musician, one of the things I really like is to also be able to be, not be confined to one style. But I thought it was logical as my first recording with Rotterdam Philharmonic to play that music, which is something, in a way, part of my language, so part of my body, part of my soul. And Ravel is de has definitely been very important in the start of my career as a guest conductor. So it's one of the focus we will have in the, uh, together, Rotterdam Philharmonic and myself, in the next few years, uh, Ravel, Debussy, and uh, this is why this is our first recording. Precisely, Ravel wanted to take that symbol of uh, Austrian music tradition and make it his own to express precisely the differences between his own culture and that culture. So it's in a way a tribute and in a way a cheeky... Uh, <laughs> wink <laughs> at uh, how different those uh, uh, nations are. Uh, the best example is La Valse, precisely, because La Valse started to, by being uh, named, his intention was to name it Wien. So it was a picture of Vienna for him, and not necessarily a pretty one, not that he was in any way implying that it was not good, but it was more a sad one because it was after World War I. And to see how um, that civilization in Europe in general was taking that wealth and how the, that wealth and luxury and uh, grand aspect of the culture all of a sudden led to collapse. And that's precisely musically what we have in La Valse is 
a slow dance, getting faster and getting so, um, you said, infectious, of, of course, but then it becomes so infectious or uh, out of control in a way that it all collapses. And I, that's why I think this is one of the most significant works of early 20th century. Uh, so it, it shouldn't make us smile as much as make us scared <laughs> when we listen to that piece. Pretty much all Ravel has an extraordinary visual element because of the association with color. If we're, why aren't, are we always referring to French music with color? I think it's because we see something when we hear the uh, alliage of all those timbers together. Uh, so then, to lead with uh, the dance aspect, that's pretty much uh, related and connected the rhythm is so obvious in many of those cases that the lightness of touch, um, we can imagine dancers. Yet this music, you know, it's hard to tell now with that perspective because that music also has shaped what ballet has become. Uh, especially uh, a work like Daphne's. This was exactly at the same time as we had Rite of Spring, uh, as so we had uh, Firebird, uh, we had L'Après-Midi d'un Faune by Debussy. It's all that extraordinarily rich period where the ballet russe in Paris were so important. So in the, on one hand gave us, as classical musicians, uh, an extraordinary wealth of works, but gave also ballet a second wind uh, in a way. So yes, I, I hope that listeners will be able to close their eyes and being transported in some kind of painting <laughs> while listening to it. One of the former chief conductors of the Rotterdam Philharmonic was actually Jean Fournet, a French conductor who sadly passed away uh, not so long ago. Uh, and Jean Fournet did a lot of French music with the orchestra. So I can feel it still in the, in the memory of the people. Uh, yet the orchestra has been doing a lot of Russian music under Valery Gergiev. So it was interesting for me to keep the very distinctive color of the orchestra, uh, namely also the, the the woodwind colors, for example, that is really specific to the Dutch school and apply it to the French uh, style. So I think there's uh, something very personal about that disc and that offering because of that. <laughs> 